Hello and welcome back to A Swift Look, a Taylor Swift show. I'm Zoe Jewell and today we are doing the impossible task of ranking Taylor Swift's track five songs. This is going to be a tough one, you guys. Okay, so if you know anything about Taylor Swift, you know how important, how meaningful, how impactful her choice, her decision to put a specific song in the track five slot on the album is. It didn't used to be intentional, this track five song situation, but I think Swifties noticed it in her early albums and Taylor certainly noticed in her early albums that her most heartfelt, gut-wrenching, emotional, intense songs on the album tended to be her track five song. In some ways, from my perspective, the track five song is the, it's the thesis. It's, it's, it's the, it's the heart, it's the crux of the album. It sort of is the emotional heartbeat of the album. Whatever pain or whatever emotion she's feeling the deepest when it comes to the album as a whole, you feel it the most with the track five song. So as I said, this was a theme, this was a thing that people noticed in her early albums, and then Taylor herself, I think it was during the Lover era, um, actually talked about the track five decision-making process and kind of how she got to the point of like being so intentional about the track fives, and this is what she said. I think this was in an Instagram live. Quote, I didn't realize I was doing this, but as I was making albums, I guess I just kind of, I guess... I was just kind of putting a very vulnerable, personal, honest, emotional song as track five. So because you've noticed it, I kind of started to put that, put the songs that were the, that were really honest, emotional, vulnerable, and personal as track five. So as I said, wasn't always intentional, but now over the course of the last handful of albums, it's become something that she like is purposeful um, and is very intentional in choosing the track five. So today, as I mentioned, we're doing the impossible ta task of ranking these track five songs from her first 10 albums. This is obviously we are leading into the Tortured Poets department. We know that the track five title for that album is going to be called So Long London, which is going to be an emotional song, I have no doubt. But we can revisit this ranking once that album is out and once the song is out and we can hear it. But I thought, let's do the ranking now um, before we hear that song and then we can adjust after the album is released. So I'm just gonna very quickly go through each album and just read out to you what each track five is in case you've forgotten and then we'll get into the ranking. Okay, so on her debut album, Taylor Swift, track five is Cold As You, Fearless, White Horse, Speak Now, Dear John, Red, All Too Well, 1989, All You Had To Do Was Stay, Reputation is Delicate, Lover, The Archer, Folklore, My Tears Ricochet, Evermore, Tolerate It, and Midnight's You're On Your Own Kid. Okay, I also wanna say before we get into the ranking that I genuinely like all of these songs, obviously some more than others, but even though a song's gonna end up as number 10, doesn't mean I hate the song. Starting with number 10, we have Cold As You off of her debut album, Taylor Swift. Now again, not a bad song, but this is a song she wrote when she was 15, 16 years old, very clearly about a teenage high school love. She's obviously, it's, it's an emotional song. It's a song where she's upset, she's mad, she's been hurt, um, but it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the intensity of some of her other songs and it doesn't have i think we can all agree that like when the the kind of emotional pain or like heartbreak quote unquote heartbreak we face when we're 15 is very different than the heartbreak we we feel when we're like in our early 20s or then in our mid 20s you know as as we get get older it's just a different kind of emotion it doesn't mean that she didn't feel a lot of pain at the time but when you can step back and look at everything over the course of her life you realize it's like, yeah, that was a, a, that's a different situation, right? It may not even really be about her life. We actually don't know. I, I actually still don't know who this song is about or like, I don't feel like there's as much lore behind Cold As You either. Whereas some of these other songs, there's like a, a, a lot of story, a lot of history behind the song. So number 10, again, not a bad song, but doesn't hit quite like the others do. All right, number nine, we have tolerate it. Now this might be controversial, 
because I know people love this song. This is obviously off of the Evermore album. I like this song and it's an emotional song, but I just, I don't know why it doesn't hit me in the way that other songs do. I think, I think when it came out, because at the time Taylor was in a relationship, a seemingly very happy relationship and was in love, we obviously didn't think the song was about her life. It, we, it felt, or it seemed, and I think the way that she was sort of described the song was like, she had watched movies and read books and she was inspired to write the song based off of these fictional stories that she was seeing and reading, not necessarily something that was impacting her own life personally. And I'm not saying that a song has to be personal in order for it to like resonate or connect with me. But I think just because I knew that going into listening to Evermore, I was just less connected to the song. Um, and again, it's a great song. It's a great moment in the Eras tour. Like I love the performance and like the sort of show that she puts on with the song. But compared to the other track fives, it doesn't quite connect as much as the others. Number eight, All You Had To Do Was Stay. Now this is a really fun, I shouldn't even say fun's probably the wrong word. It's a, it's a, like, it's a poppy kind of lighter song. It's not as emotional. It's not as like slow and, um, ballad-esque as maybe some of the other songs are. But if we're being honest, 1989 is not a super emotional album. It's actually a very like hopeful, optimistic, exciting, fun, vibrant album about like sort of starting over your life and, and going into this new chapter of who you are as an adult and like starting over. And we know a lot of that album is about her relationship, allegedly about her relationship with Harry Styles, which we, we now know like didn't it wasn't like an amazing ending to the relationship, but they, they have a very cordial relationship, friendship. So she didn't have like a super, super emotional, intense breakup song on that album about him. And this was kind of the most emotional and deep that she got about the relationship on that album. And so while I like the song, it's just not that deep in my opinion, which maybe is a controversial thing to say, but that's why it's at number eight. Okay, moving on. Number seven, we have White Horse off of Fearless. Now, I loved this song when I was a teenager, 15, 16 years old. Amazing song. I thought it was so great. I still think it's a great song. I love the, I mean, obviously there's a lot of fairy tale analogies within the Fearless album. Love story being, you know, Romeo, Juliet. It's not really a fairy tale, but um, a lot of kind of like princess, prince themes. Um, and White Horse obviously fits into that theme. I think it's a deepish song. Again, it's like a level up from Cold As You. Like now she's a little bit older and she's experienced a little bit more pain and she's experienced a little bit more of what it feels like to really have your heart broken and all that kind of stuff. But it still is a different kind of pain and a different kind of emotional maturity that you feel when you're 18 versus again, when you're like in your early to mid to late 20s. So like the song, and I'm gonna keep saying it until we get to like the top three or four songs, but just not as deep, doesn't connect quite as much as the others. Okay, number six, The Archer off of the Lover album. Now this song is interesting for me personally because when I first heard it, I didn't love it. I actually, I shouldn't say I didn't like it, but I was, I was like, okay, it's fine. And I kind of just moved on. I, re I, re I think she put this song out before the album came out, if I remember correctly. It was like one of the songs that she released leading up to the album coming out. And again, I liked it. I didn't love it. But over the years, I've really come around to the song. And now I really like it. And it's one of my favorite songs off of the album. And what I love about it is... It's about anxiety. It's for my anxiety girls out there. It's not really about a relationship. It's not really about a breakup. It is about feeling anxious. And I think something we all can relate to, this feeling of like, you know, am I supposed to be in this? How does it make me feel? You kind of second guess yourself. You, I don't know. It's, it's very, um, it's just, it's kind of, I think something we all can relate to, just the feeling of, um, a feeling of uncertainty, I think, simply put. I mean, one of the lines in the song, I wake up, I, I wake in the night, I pace like a ghost, the room is on fire, invisible smoke. All of my heroes die all alone, help me hold on to you. 
you know, this, oh my God, I'm stressed. Am I going to be with this person forever? People I ad admire die a alone. I don't want to die alone. <laughs> Are you going to be with me for the rest of my life? Just like this, I don't know. I think it's a really vulnerable song. Um, and I think, again, as an anxious girl, as someone who struggles with that, I really relate the song and a lot of the lyrics in the song. So Archer, number six. Okay, number five, we have Delicate off of Reputation. I, again, this was a song that I, I liked initially. And as time has gone by, really like Reputation as a whole, I've really learned to love and has like grown so much since it came out. Um, but Delicate is, is just about this finding this new love and realizing like love is very delicate and you're, you don't want to say the wrong thing. You don't want to mess it up. You're so excited to be with this new person, but you're also sort of like, you're scared because you've been hurt in the past and you don't want to be hurt again. So you're a little trepidatious. It's just, I think it really um, summarizes the feelings of like the early days of falling in love with somebody and that fear of like, I want this to work out and I think it can work out with this person, but also it hasn't worked out for me before. So what if it doesn't work out again? And everything just feels a little bit fragile. And I feel like this song really encompasses all of that perfectly. Um, and I also just love the music video. If you've seen the music video of her doing her dance, kind of the one shot dance, um, I just think it's really fun. And I think it's like an interesting juxtaposition, the song with, with, with the dancing. Um, it's fun. Okay, we've made it to the top four people. So now we mean business. Number four, you're on your own kid from Midnight's. I love this song. I love it. I think it is so, it's like emotional on one hand, but it's also like very empowering on the other hand. It, the title basically says it all, but it's a basically like, you know, you can have all these people and these fans and have all these relationships and you can look for all these ways to sort of like fill a void in you or fill you up or make you feel less alone. But the reality is like, you are the only person you have in this world. And so, you know, you've gotta be strong with yourself because you're all that, that you have. And I think we all can relate to that to some level. Um, and I also love this song because if you listen closely to the, to the words, she really kind of goes through her entire history, like from start to finish of becoming a major performer and kind of like the different things that kind of happened to her op over the course of her career. Again, we have the iconic make the friendship bracelet line, which has led to many obviously wonderful fans trading bracelets, but also I think we can thank that line for bringing Taylor and Travis together. Um, and I, yeah, again, it's just, it's one of my favorites on the album. I just think it's, I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. I love it. And uh, I would like her to put that in the official set list too. Please, Taylor. Okay, top three, guys. Number three, My Tears Ricochet, Folklore. This song is everything. This song is essentially about Taylor reckoning with the disillusion of her relationship with her former music label and just friend, essentially, Scott Borchetta and Big Machine Records. Um, this is a, this is the tough one. Um, it is, I mean, you have to listen to the full song to get the full story, but basically she is telling the story from almost her own funeral and watching these people who she used to trust at her funeral, but knowing that they betrayed her. It's a song about betrayal, essentially, but not being betrayed by a romantic partner, being betrayed by people you trust so intimately, like people that you consider to be family. Um, here's a line I wanted to read from the song. And I can go anywhere I want, anywhere I want, just not home. And you can aim for my heart, go for blood, but you would still miss me in your bones. That's, that's a tough one. I actually wanted to look up to another um, lyric because now when I'm talking, I can't remember lyrics very well. Um, but there was a line that I wanted to, to talk about. Um, let me see if I can find it. And if I'm dead to you, why are you at the wake? That's also that's also a crazy line. Um, there was another, uh, anyway, crazy song. 
amazing, fantastic. Hits like a knife. The production value too on this song is so good and is so, it just, everything is like elevated because of the lyrics and the production value. I think even Jack Antonoff said that, that he felt like this is her best, her, her top five, um, her top five song. Oh, this is the line I wanted to say. Um, and I still talk to you when I'm screaming at the sky and when you can't sleep at night, you hear my stolen lullabies. Now, for those who don't know, obviously the feud between Taylor Swift and Scott Borchetta, her, her former music label was because she was not, she, she claims that she was not allowed to buy back her master record, which is why now she's gone on this whole journey of re-recording her, her, her old albums and now owning those albums. So the line, you hear my stolen lullabies, ooh, that one hits, yikes. Okay, number two, Dear John, speak now. I mean, the name says it all. The name says it all. Obviously, I shouldn't say obviously because she's never officially confirmed it, but this song is about John Mayer. I think we can all probably <laughs> agree with that. Um, obviously, the phrase, Dear John, you that's what people write, you know, when like you're writing to someone sort of anonymously. Um, it's about a song about a girl who's being manipulated by an older man, being in a relationship that she knows she shouldn't be in, being completely destroyed by this person who has, you know, basically walked all over her. It is some of the best writing I think Taylor's ever done. I feel like this song in particular, this song and then one we're about to talk about are kind of like the quintessential track five songs. Like when people think of Taylor Swift track five, I think Dear John really comes to mind. It is just, it is intense and it's, it's a long song. It's like over five minutes long. It is clearly something that just really emotionally rocked her and just, I don't know, affected her so deeply. And again, the lyrics in this song are some of her best writing. And I feel like this was the song where, and the moment kind of like when Taylor was really, the first time that she was really, truly hurt. Now, I'm not saying that that's true because maybe she had been previously and I'm sure she you know, had been to some degrees, but I feel like with this song in this moment, it, it was like she had really felt a betrayal. Um, and it made for an absolutely sensational song. All right, number one should should come as absolutely no surprise to anybody <laughs> watching this. It's All Too Well from Red. I don't think I really even need to talk about it because <laughs> it's just kind of obvious. I feel like not putting All Too Well as number one would be weirder than putting it at, at one. It's just the best song. It was never a single. It was never supposed to be like a major hit song and yet it has become one of her, I mean, in my opinion, it's her best song ever, but I think just in general among fans, it is regarded as one of her absolute, absolute best. The songwriting, the lyrics, the storytelling, the scarf, the scarf. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's, it's her crowning achievement, I think. I don't know. I hope and pray that she will write a song as emotional, as impactful, as deep, as vulnerable, as all too well again in her life. But I kind of feel like it's one of those songs that's like, even the greatest artists kind of just have like that one in them. And I feel like it's it's that for Taylor Swift. Like, I think she's obviously gonna cont continue to make amazing music over the course of her career, but all too well is the creme de la creme. And you cannot convince me otherwise. Also the fact that she has a 10 minute version of the song as well. If you write a song, a 10 minute version of a song, you know that you've been really deeply affected by something because how many, I don't know that I could write 10, a 10 minute song. Well, I can't write a song in general, but I don't know that I could write a 10 minute song about anything in my life ever and have that much emotion and like stuff to say. So you know that that moment affected her so deeply, but it's, it's, it's the absolute best. Okay, that is it. That is my ranking of the track five Taylor songs. Let me know in the comments your ranking, your favorite track five, least favorite track five, what you think, where where you envision this Torture Poets Department track five falling in your ranking. I have high hopes. I think it could be a top five of all time contender. I am crossing my fingers because I think it's gonna be a good one. Um, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. As always, make sure to subscribe to our channel. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.